Gonna do a little more scribing, and this is a very traditional way to scribe. This is the gable end of the wall cabinet on the driver's side. Welcome to Van of Action. If you're converting a van into a camper, you need to learn how to scribe, how to cut materials to follow odd shapes. Nothing in a van is flat or straight, and you need to know a number of different techniques on how to follow those shapes with the material that you're cutting. This is one of many videos about scribing on this site. Check it out. If you find it useful, please give us a like, a share, a subscribe, and by all means, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Let's get started. This is the gable end of the wall cabinet on the driver's side. Here's a picture of it. And what I want to do is I want to take this very thin cedar skin and apply it to this face. It's going to go on and because my because my uh, clamping table is so narrow, I'm going to be doing it in two pieces instead of one. But I have to scribe it to this side of the the van and I have to scribe it at the ceiling. When you're doing this, you ask yourself which part is the most important. And in this particular case, this is a finished joint. There's nothing else going up here. On this side, I still have my window trim to deal with, so this doesn't have to be as tight. This is the one I need to focus on ultimately. For now though, what I'm gonna do is this. I wanna set the, this edge of the, the panel parallel to this edge that I'm, I'm gonna be ultimately fitting to. I've already done that. I've made marks on this board. So I'm just gonna set it up with my glasses. Okay, now, this side is parallel with this side. Ultimately, I'll be cutting a piece between here and here. There'll be another piece going in, but I want this one and this one to be parallel. And now I'm going to cut this side wall to, so that this ultimately ends up being parallel. I'm going to do that as soon as I find it. Okay, hang on. Oh, it's right here. It's right here. Good God. Okay. So, four inches there on the mark. On the mark. It can be a little finicky. It's important, though, to take your time and make sure it's right. And now all you do is take your scribing tool, your scribing tool, and you measure the widest part. It's so hard to get out far enough away for you to see this. Let's see here. Okay. You try and figure out where the widest part's going to be. That's going to be down about here. So I open that scribing tool so it's to the widest space. Just broke my pencil. It's good. Now, I'm not up at the top. I'm going to be doing this in a couple of steps. And because I know I, have a, I can have a little bit of forgiveness on this side, I'm just going to try and get it close for now. And then I'll start working on the top a little later. Now that I know how much I have to take off, I hold it perpendicular and just come down the side. It'll come out almost to nothing at the widest spot, which is good. It'll start coming back in again. An odd hump here. Oh, there. Okay. Good. Now let me just take this one. Okay, I don't know if you can see this or not. Come over here. Okay, let me show you this. You see, as I was coming down and doing the scribing down the side of the van, I came out to, it came out like this because this side is hitting this hump and is forcing it this way, away from the wall further than it should go. Because ultimately, sorry about this part, ultimately the panel is going to be able to slide in there further. So I wanted to just make an adjustment on that little hump. You gotta watch what you're doing here because sometimes 
just like above the door panel that we did, the, um, the scriber doesn't always touch exactly the way it's supposed to. Okay, let's see how this first cut went. And this is the first cut. We're not, we're not hoping for miracles. It'd be nice if a miracle happened, but we're not banking on it. Now the first cut. So before we look at this cut that we made, we have to set it up so we're the right distance here. That's the first thing. Very first thing. So now where's my tape measure? Right here. Uh, this one, I'm, now I'm going to lift it up because it's closer to the cut I want to make. And we have to move it over to where the, the panel belongs now. We're not, we're not lifting it up. We're not using the old marks we used because we cut some off of this side, right? We're not using the old marks because we cut off this side. So now the panel's moved over. So we have to reset our parallel line. bottom you get it's clumsy to do alone i've got a little clamp i'm going to clamp at the bottom here a little snappy clamp it's four and seven eighths what is four and seven eighths I'm going to make a reference mark for myself there so I don't have to keep measuring it. Here, so I don't have to keep measuring it. Okay, now come and see. I've now set the distance between the edge of the panel and this, the, the same at both top and bottom. That means the panel now is, is this edge of the panel is where I want it to be. And that's what we're trying to scribe to. We're trying to scribe to get this side where it has to go. So now we can take a look at the other side, at the, the, the band side. Doesn't look bad. I don't want it touching. I want to have a little bit of room because I have a, another piece of wood going on this, this white stuff. It doesn't have to be tight. And tight, it just might cause some squeaks. And here, this is the part I was telling you about, remember? See the panel slid in behind there nicely. That looks really good, except for this spot right in here where it's touching. So I'm going to take a little more off of that just because I don't want it too tight. I'm just going to take a little bit more off of right there, and that piece will be done. Now, I want to also do the top. So a little bit of room here because this panel is going to go up. I might want to take a little more off of this underside as well. I'll just see. So now that is exactly where that panel is going to go. So now I just take my scribing tool and my panel is long. I know it's long. I have made it long. So I'm going to trim at the top and then I'll just cut the bottom off where it suits. So now it's just a matter of taking this. And that'll be my line. And that may not be perfectly straight because I've sanded this surface, so it may be a little bit undulating. So that's going to be good. I've come down to my table saw bench, my workbench, to do to make this cut. And I want to show you how, how we do it. There was a time in my life when I taught a night school course called uh, table. Uh, it was called cabinet making with a skill saw, a drill, and a router. And a lot of people think that if you want to work with wood, you have to have a whole shop full of fancy tools like that. And, uh, it was like it was Nam. Remember Nam on the uh, the Yankee builder, whatever it was? He had this like a 6,000 square foot garage that was full of every woodworking tool you could ever imagine. Well, you don't you don't need those things. You just don't. If you know if you the big part of the job is knowing how your tools work and then letting them do what they do best, putting them, putting your tools in a position to be successful. And so, and this is where a lot of my students really went crazy, got really honestly pissed off with me. A tradesman spends almost more time getting ready to make the cut than actually making the cut. You spend more time preparing to do the job than you do actually doing the job, and that's really the secret. So in this case, I wanna cut just this little hair off the end of this board. 
I don't want that board to move. I've got it clamped. I've got it really good and solid. And I hope you can see the line. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it doesn't amount to very much. It's right along here. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can cut that off. Some people would think, oh, I'll use my table saw. Well, that would be a mistake because this line isn't straight. I haven't checked this, but I'll guarantee you it's not straight. I, don't know if you, I hope you can see this, but I've got the line, the square touching the line at this end. And, oh, it isn't, wait a minute. There we go. I can just see the line at this end and this end, but in the middle, I've got almost, oh heck, that'd be almost a sixteenth of an inch difference between my line and where the square is. This is not a straight piece. And I knew it wouldn't be because these pieces aren't straight. Now, they aren't perfectly flat. I didn't make them that way. So now, a table saw won't work. You could use a rasp. And I'm going to zoom in on this. Hopefully you can see this. This is a knife cut that I made earlier when I was using, when I was doing another cut on this piece. I could use my rasp. And a rasp is just a really coarse file. You could use your rasp just to get rid of that if you wanted to. You know what? That's, actually, that's not too bad at all. Now you see, but that's, we could do that. We could use a sander. We could use a, a jigsaw. There's all kinds of different ways we could cut it off, but we're gonna get a rough cut if we just do it that way. First thing we have to do is score the upper end of the veneer. And I'm gonna do that with a straight edge and just pick out, even a crooked line is just a series of straight lines. So I line up here and come that far. And to there. The secret is to have a nice sharp knife. And we do this, we score the outside edge. Look at that, that's not bad. We score the outside edge of the, of the cut so that we don't get chipping as we make the cut. There we go. Now, I was gonna use my, band, my belt sander for this, but let's just try it this way. See, this, is, this, this would work absolutely fine if you're a person who had the patience to do that kind of thing, and I'm not. That's just, that's just going to be too hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my... I'm going to try using my belt sander. Yeah, this will work fine. Now, the one thing I wanted to point out, though, was if you notice when I was doing this rasp work, I'm not trying to rasp it on a 90-degree uh, angle. Here's a square. I'm not trying to rasp like this. I'm rasping like this intentionally. I'm undercutting my cut. The longest part of this board should be the face. Behind the face, it should fall away a little bit so that it doesn't get in the way when I go to fit it against the cabinet I want to fit it against. I'll do the same thing with my belt sander. I hope you have ear protection. Here we go. too close to the arm of the table saw there. Hopefully you can still see that. Now you see how it's starting to get a little bit of a burr. That's because I'm getting close to my, my knife cut there. Whoa. That's not good. I will glue that up before I'm done. And I'm not even happy with that. Just give me a second. Okay, so when I was doing the sanding there, if you didn't notice it, what happened was the sanding belt caught this grain, and cedar's a soft, it's a long grain softwood, and it splits very easily. So I don't want that to get any worse. I will glue that up before I put it back in. It'll be as good as new, probably better than new. But for this part of the job, I have to protect it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp this piece of wood to the bench on this side of it. 
and that'll prevent it from moving when the belt hits it. There we go. Okay, let's try it again. Cover your ears. see that okay I'm almost to my cut line this because it's not straight I can't go right up against the cut line with my sanding my belt sander because the belt sander isn't is a isn't as accurate either so now I'm gonna take my, my rasp which is a really coarse file and I have another semi coarse file and I'm just going to very gently A lot of people, a lot of people don't know that a file is a really important tool to a woodworker. And you see, I'm just working through that line where there's a little bit more I can use the coarse burr rasp. Constantly, always, always, always making sure I'm undercutting. Always, always, always undercutting. it should be pretty good let's take a look and see now well the one thing is um, to remember is that you're working on the end grain my belt sander has a very old very fine belt on it so the end grain which is the densest part that's a little bit long there. the end grain is the densest part of the uh the wood so it takes a little more time to uh a little more effort it's a little like a, to, to get it ground off but that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Let's give it a try. Back inside. Now, the first thing we do is we make sure that we set our panel straight up and down where we want it to, to go. It doesn't matter how, how it fits on the ceiling at the moment. Right now, we want to set this panel up high on that mark so that we know it's in the right place. That's really important. And then if we have to make some adjustments, we can make them. That's, we've only done this, we've only had one, one shot at this. I mean, there could be a little bit of finicking, you know, a little bit of fooling around if we have to. Not a big deal. It's nice if you can do it in one cut, but for fine ones, for finished ones, it's not always possible. Okay, that's exactly where we want the panel this way. Now let's take a look at the top. Doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad at all. So we got a panel done here. It's perfect here. And on the against the side, it's fine as well. That panel is ready to, to install. It's not hard. You just gotta take your time. And you and the most important thing is to hold the piece where you want to have it. Holding it still. You see, I've got a clamp down there at the bottom. Holding it still is really important. Hope you find this helpful. And this is what it looks like finished, ready for the plugs. Now, by being very careful when we set this joint, when we were scribing, if you remember, we kept it, tried to make, make sure it was absolutely parallel to this side. And in doing that, all I had to do was, when I fit this piece, was measure the distance and run it over the table saw. And just with a little bit of fitting, look at that joint. It came out really well, I'm quite happy with that. Just took a few minutes.
And here is the finished panel. The top cut was quite neat and tidy, but the right hand side, you see with the window trim on, I had lots of room for mistakes there. I didn't have to be as fussy with my scribing. In fact, I didn't want it too tight for fear it might cause some squeaks. That looks like quite a substantial piece of wood, but really it's only 5 16 of an inch thick. Nice light cedar. Hope you found this useful. Give us a like, a share, and a subscribe by all means. And leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Cheers. <laughs>